Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're gonna start our final review for our geometry class. We'll actually be working through a worksheet with lots of different problems for all the concepts that we covered. And you can find a link to that PDF in the description below. And we're gonna start right now with problem number one. Number one up here, we have examine the triangles below for each solve for X and then name the tool which we're gonna use and then show all of our work. Just a little heads up for these videos here. I will not be going super slow and in depth in how or why we're using a certain tool, theorem, law. I'm just gonna be using it because at this point we should know those different concepts. And if you don't, it's all good. I would say go watch some of my older videos to get a recap of why those things work in that way. But for now, we're gonna jump in on number one. I'm actually gonna zoom in here on letter A so we can just focus in on this guy and solve this guy out. Now, I noticed that I have two sides of this triangle that I know. One is 12 foot, the other is 15 foot. It looks like I'm trying to find this third side here as X. The only other piece of information I know in this triangle is that that top angle is 68 degrees. Now, this is not a right triangle, right? I don't see a 90 degree angle in there. I know some of you might be thinking Pythagorean's theorem. I know two sides, I want the third, but no, we cannot use that here because we don't have a right angle. But I do know two sides of this triangle. I also have the angle that is across from that missing side. This looks like a law of cosines problem. Law of cosines works when we know two sides, we know the angle in the middle, we want that third side, that side across from the angle that we know. So this is definitely going to be law of cosines. If you forgot what law of cosines is, here is the formula C squared equals A squared plus B squared. It looks just like Pythagorean's theorem, but we got to adjust because it's not a 90 degree angle. So here's the adjustment, minus 2AB, times cosine of our angle C. All we have to do now is plug in the info that we know. Our two sides that we know here, the sides we're not finding, those are our A and B. Doesn't matter which one's A, which one's B. What does matter to us though, is that this third side, the side unknown, the side across from the given angle, that is our C side. That means our 68 degrees is our capital C, we have all of our known variables here. We can plug them into this formula and we can solve. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I'm not gonna write C squared anymore because I know that that is X squared. It's going to equal my A squared, which is 12, plus my B squared, which is 15, minus two times my A again, which is 12, times my B, which is 15, times cosine of our angle 68 degrees. Now this looks very complicated, right? It's a very complicated looking formula. The nice thing though is that we take this entire right side here and we throw that into our calculator and it does all the work for us. So watch, I'm gonna have x squared equals and now I'm gonna get out my calculator. I'm using the one on desmos.com. It's a free one, super nice and easy to use. I'm gonna type in 12 squared plus 15 squared minus two parentheses 12 parentheses 15 cosine of my angle 68 degrees i'm gonna hit enter i gotta scoot that over so we can see we end up with 234.142 234.142 but be careful that is x squared i don't want x squared i want x so to find x we need to square root that final answer. Don't forget that step when you're working on our uh, our final here. So I can just hit the square root button. Whoops, not twice, just once. I'll hit the answer button to plug that in. And we see that our missing side is approximately 15.302 feet. Boom, that's it. We have solved our first problem here for A using, I didn't even write it down, but using the law of cosines. Awesome, all righty, let's move on to B. I'm looking here at B right here, and I noticed that it is a right triangle. So that already opens some doors for us. You see a right triangle? We know we can use sine, cosine, tangent, or maybe even Pythagorean's theorem if that's an option. So if I focus in here, 
it looks like I have this angle here of 40 degrees. I know that this side over here is nine. I'm trying to find this other missing side that is X. If I know an angle in a side, I'm trying to find a missing side of a right triangle. And this is either sine, cosine, or tangent. So now we got to figure out which one are we using? Well, the nine is a cross from our angle, our reference angle. So that is our opposite side. We know this side over here is going to be the um, given, uh, the hypotenuse, I mean. Hypotenuse is always a cross from the 90. Looks like I don't even care about the hypotenuse here, which means our last side over here is our adjacent side. We got opposite. We have adjacent. That's definitely going to be tangent. Tangent uses opposite and adjacent. So let's set that up again. Tangent of our angle, 40 degrees, equals opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to have 9 over x. We know the drill by now. Put the other side over 1. We're going to cross multiply and we're going to solve this out. So nine. Uh, let's do this. x times tangent of 40 degrees is going to equal 9 times 1, which is 9. We almost have x by itself, but I need to divide both sides by tangent of 40 degrees. Be sure when you're working these out that you're showing every step along the way, right? We want to make sure we're being clear and concise. So x is by itself there. Those tangents of 40s have canceled out. x is going to equal 9 over tangent of 40 degrees. You just got to get your calculator out now and divide those two numbers. I'm going to get mine out one more time. Whoops, let's scoot it over so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to type in 9 divided by tangent of 40 degrees. That missing side ends up being 10.726. 10.726 centimeters. There we go. Two out of our three problems are done. What did we use for B? Well, we just use our good old friend tangent. All right, you see how these problems work, right? It's not telling you use law of cosines, use tangent. You got to figure that out. That's the tricky part here. Okay, but we, we know a lot of tools. We just got to know when to use those tools. All right, we only got one more left. And I'm looking at C here and I'm noticing it kind of looks like a 90 degree angle in there, right? That kind of looks like a 90, but then kind of not. It looks like it's a little more obtuse than 90. Well, there's no way of us to know at the moment. We can find it out in a second, right? But going off of what it looks like, we want to make sure we're not assuming that it's 90. We're going to need to double check that out. Well, I do know that this angle here is 52 degrees. That is 63 degrees. Well, we could totally find this missing angle because angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So if I want to find that missing angle, let's get our calculator out one more time. We can type in 180 minus 63 minus 52. That missing angle there is 65 degrees. Yeah, this is definitely not 90 degrees. And I would also say that that um, uh, triangle is not drawn to scale because that 65 degree angle looks a lot like it's bigger than 90. But we got to go off the numbers, right? We can't assume by the picture. Alrighty, so I have two let's see i know all the angles i know that this side over here is eight I'm trying to find out what x is you might be thinking law of cosines here but i know more than one angle i actually know all the angles here if i know all the angles in here and one side this definitely is not going to be law of cosines but i think this is going to be law of sines i'm gonna go ahead and write out our formula for that sine of an angle over the opposite side equals sine of another angle over the opposite side. That is our law of sines right there. We just now have to plug in the information that we know. Let's start with the side of X. Notice that 63 degrees is across from X, okay? They are paired together. So when I'm writing out my formula here, sine of 63 degrees is gonna go over X. They're paired up. It's the angle and the opposite side. Take a second to think about what I'm going to write in this second fraction. Okay, it's got to be the angle and the opposite side. Hopefully you're seeing that why no 8, 65 degrees, opens up to 8. Those are the two pieces of information that I'm going to use. 
Once we get to this step, cross, multiply, and solve. That's how we solve fractions out. So we'll go ahead and cross multiply. X times sine of 65 degrees is gonna equal eight times sine of 63 degrees. I want X by itself. Well, I think what we need to do then is divide both sides by sine of 65 degrees, right? It is stuck on there with that X. If I divide both sides, hey, it's gonna cross out, simplify to one. So now I'm left with this messy, messy fraction, but we're okay, our calculator can handle it. Sine of 63 degrees over sine of 65 degrees. Your calculator, just like with law of cosines, is gonna handle this messy, messy fraction. Let's do it real quick. Eight times sine of 63 degrees divided by sine of 65 degrees, and it's gonna equal 7.865. 7.865 miles. There we go. We just solved out C using law of sines. Remember, law of sines, law of cosines, we use those for non-right triangles. When it is a right triangle, okay, let me go ahead and, and highlight what we used. When it is a right triangle, we want to use normal sine, normal cosine, normal tangent. And if you're thinking right now, what the heck did he just do? I don't remember law of sines at all. Oh, maybe I don't remember law of cosines. Well, go look at my older videos where I have lots more examples and I go a little slower and more in depth on how to plug those in, okay? All right, y'all, it's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.